Hello, welcome to Gamer Interview. My name is Sean Mark, and today we're going to talk about the things we saw in PAX South 2019. So we're in line, and we start moving. I'm always so nervous whenever we started going. Also, the lines were paced out perfectly, uh, so that one, two, three, and then four, which was the line we were in, line number four, they let them out in order. Because there's a lot of people that come on Saturday, and as the line dispersed, I got to see more and more things in there. I'm just following David at this point. He's trying to run over to the Sony booth so that he can get to Days Gone. Uh, trying to find my way through the crowd. It's always exciting. There's always so much happening around you. It's hard to pay attention to everything. Uh, it's just frantic. And as you can see here, there's not a lot of people being fourth in line. It's great, especially if there was an indie game you wanted to see. This is a good time to do it right whenever you get there. Or a triple A game, specifically, if you wanted to play something like Days Gone or Resident Evil 2, which were both at this conference. Um, usually I run to the first indie developer I see, uh, but this year I was just <laughs> overwhelmed by how many things were there. I felt like things were spaced out better. There was a lot more room to walk around. But yet again, like I said, this conference had just started. Some people looked like they weren't sure where they were gonna go. It was the first day there. A lot of people only had the Saturday pass. We still haven't done the three-day pass yet, so found my brother at Days Gone. I found the Days Gone uh, <laughs> kiosk, and it was great. Uh, it looked really cool, and there was just so much going on. I uh, just so much going on around me, and I stopped. I stopped there because I was like, I'm good. Uh, usually, I do a full lap around. But uh, this year I decided to be more casual. Saw a bunch of indie games right off of the back, going through kiosk to kiosk, from indie game to indie game. Great looking, fun games. And then I got to Brawlhalla, that's been there for a while. There was PC Land, that's off to the side, that's been there for years. They've left it out in the open instead of a closed in room like it was our first year. Bandai Namco had a huge presence this year. Jump Force had its own kiosk, which had a lot of people playing it. And there is the infamous Capcom Resident Evil display. The line was way too long. You'd have to get in line super early in order to get it. And it was just amazing. Uh, this looked like it was something out of a horror movie. Uh, whenever you walk up and see the police car and the <laughs> dead body on it, it was really exciting and I can't wait for this game. There was a picture booth, there was the PAX merch table, and then that Devil May Cry. This I would have played over anything else, but the line was, yet again, was way too long. So I just looked at it. And eventually we made our way to Divinity 2's tent where me and my wife played Divinity 2. It was pretty fun and pretty relaxing. Then after that, um, we looked at the U.S. Army area that had this awesome rocket launcher. And I didn't know there was actually a game built into there. You can actually shoot people. I just thought it was a display, so that was really cool. So I went back to Days Gone and looked at what their outside but the other side of their thing was amazing. They had a VR game, Firewall, that's out for PSVR. That was really awesome. They had this banner, which I'd never seen before, had a lot of Japanese games that they had brought to America. That was cool. They had limited run games there. I've never seen limited run games in person. That was amazing to see them there, look at their games and talk to them. This studio really great, making really good looking horror games. This developer, they've been there for a while. I've seen a few of their games, actually played a few of their games. So I didn't play this year and was just happy that they were there getting more exposure. Berserk Studios, they were really nice. I really liked their game as well. Oh, Arcade Spirits. I played Arcade Spirits all the way through their demo. 
It was really, really fun, and I really, really enjoyed that game. We had the Rainbow game. Me and my brother played this. It was a really, really fun game. When it's kickstarted, you should go check it out. Great game. Bomb Fest. A lot of people congregating around Bomb Fest. It just seemed like a really frenetic, fun game that a lot of people were into and talking about during the convention. Of course, there's a Devolver Digital. I really enjoy going to the Devolver Digital kiosk and, uh, you know, try not to break anything this time. Then I saw Shift had their own controllers. I thought that was really cool that they do custom-made controllers. Then me and my brother found Skullboy, which is one of the best games we have ever played. I have a picture of us looking at it, playing it, and just being blown away by this game. Skellboy is what it's called. Please check it out. It comes out on Nintendo Switch later on this year. You should definitely check that out. Then we had the Arcade Crude. They made a game called Young Souls. Looked very fun. Side-scrolling 2D beat-em-up. Then me and my wife played in our friend. This is doing old childhood memories. It was a very scary game and I loved it. It's out now and it'll be out on game consoles soon. There was other indie games that I looked at that just looked interesting but I was not able to play like one where they had what 10 people, 20, 12 people playing the same game. That was extremely interesting. I've never seen anything like that. People were, yeah, we went and go see the Lego blocks and I actually didn't really get any footage of Pax Arena or a board game section. I thought I did, but my phone didn't save those videos for some reason, I don't know why. So me and my brother took pictures by the Pax sign then we got out of PAX and he got to see the Alamo for the first time. Another reason to go to PAX South to see the historic part of San Antonio and see the Alamo and in the back they have this awesome koi pond and a garden there that we got to see. And yeah, it was a big experience for my brother who'd never been into the city of San Antonio. He'd never been to PAX before. So it was just this huge experience for him. It was the first time that I ever went into the city of San Antonio after PAX, but I've visited San Antonio so many times. We don't really need to do that, but since it was my brother's first time there, we took him on the Riverwalk. We took him to our favorite place to eat on the Riverwalk, and that was really fun. PAX this year, I was a lot more laid back, like I said. I wanted to play more games and record less, and that's what I did. Uh, this is my fourth PAX that I've gone to, and it was one of my favorites. It's one of the biggest ones. It had the biggest showing of people there. I think last year there was something other conference going on. This year they did a little later in the year and I hope next year they do it even later, -er, uh, maybe further into January. Even if it was in February, that would be fantastic. Just so, you know, after Christmas, you know, you spend all your money and then it's time for packs. That's crazy. But this year was great. It was fun that David came. I got a new perspective with David. And if you'd like to hear his perspective, we're doing a podcast, or we've done a podcast, on Geek Rating Review. It'll launch this Friday, where we talk about our experiences with PAX, everything we went through. So it was a very fun time. Thank you for watching Game Rating Review. My name is Sean Mark. Please like, drive, and like what you see. And that was my experience at PAX 2019.